When the weather gets better, one of my favorite things to cook in the backyard is lamb. And for anyone who doesn't like lamb, we need to have a serious conversation because this could be the thing that changes your mind. Page 173 and Sam the Cooking Guy in the Holy Grill is this chili cumin lamb. Chili cumin as a combination specifically with lamb is a, is a classic Chinese dish. A stir fry thing. So I've taken those flavors and turned them into something that we can put on a beautiful rack of lamb. Yay, they're so fun. They're so great. You buy them like this. This one has been Frenched and that means that the bones have been cleaned up and all the meat taken out. The presentation is much prettier. It's gonna be more expensive to buy it like this. If you have a good little fillet knife and yours aren't cleaned up, you just come in like this. E -e 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 -e. Just go along, like, kind of like you're flossing. E -e 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 -e. Okay, that was a weird analogy and potentially creepy. But the point is, they're nice like this. We're gonna cook the thing whole and then when it's done, Cut them into individual little lamb guys. We start by making our little uh, rub sauce thing for the outside. We brush it on. Oh, and we're cooking on uh, charcoal today. It's gonna be great. The recipe is below. No need to write anything down. We start with the chili component, which I like chipotle chili powder for this. Here we go. Remember, chili cumin lamb, so you know there's gonna be cumin involved. A little garlic powder, some kosher salt, some coarse ground black pepper, a little sugar, and an optional ingredient, Szechuan peppercorns. These have a numbing effect on your lips and gums just for a little bit, but it's really good. I'm gonna add them. If you don't have them, well, you don't have them, but they do make a nice addition. Give this a little mix. And the only two wet things we will add will be some soy and some sesame oil. And this we will mix. Let me get a glove and on it goes. All right, my first move is just gonna score the fat a little bit. I'm not cutting through it, I'm just cutting down. So it'll just help some of this flavor get in a little bit nicer. And then once it's there, we come by with our amazing little rub and we go like this. Mm. The smell is tremendous already. Nothing's even happened yet. And don't forget, sides. All right, look how this looks. Now, if you want, you can let this sit for an hour, a couple hours, you'd be fine. I'm gonna take it as soon as it's on and off we're gonna go. You don't have to worry too much getting it on this back part, this fat's not really gonna penetrate. I do like to give it just a little bit, but when you think you're there, let's head over. A friend asked me the other day, hey, how many knives do you have in your cooking guy collection? I had to think for a second, because I didn't remember. So it occurred to me, if I didn't know, you probably don't know, so I'm gonna show you all of our knives right now. There's Father's Day, Mother's Day's coming up, summer cooking, outdoor grilling, all kinds of reasons to buy knives for someone you love or for you. Here they are. We start with the little guy, the four inch paring knife. For all your little jobs, Mrs. Cooking Guy's favorite knife. Next, five inch Santoku, we call this the sidekick. This is perfect for veggie prep, slicing, dicing, chopping, that kind of stuff. Getting larger is our six inch fillet knife. It's thin profile, lets you get in and around bones under pesky silver skin for trimming meat. I love this kid. Then there's the seven inch Nakiri. It was our first knife, still my favorite knife. I use it for as much stuff as I can. And coming in at eight inches is our chef's knife. It's a classic, perfect for slicing meat, but mincing herbs, breaking down chickens, all kinds of other cuts of meat. It's great. How about our carving set with an eight inch knife and fork? Hello Thanksgiving, hello New Year's roast beef. Eight inch bread knife, should be obvious. Don't forget, it's perfect for cutting those squishy tomatoes. Then there's the 10 and a half inch statement. It even hits with authority. This is for your big jobs, carving a roast beef, huge stuff, that kind of thing. But wait, there's one more. Our set of four Sam the Cooking Guy steak knives. Do I have to tell you what to do with these? I don't. And if you need a recipe, you know where to go. And all the knives have these beautiful pack of wood handles and my dopey face right on the butt. The coals are hot, white, and ready, and we're gonna set up for two zone cooking. That means you dump all your coals on one side, like that. Let's start with our grate, this little guy in here. Give it just a second or two to get hot. And now that she's warmed up, lid comes off, quick oil, the area where it's going. Hey, don't flame up too much. And now comes our beautiful rack. We're gonna go meat side down right over the heat and give that, oh, a couple minutes to start to get some beautiful color. We'll flip it to the other side, do the same thing on the fat, 
and then move it over here where it's not over direct heat. Put the lid on, let it finish cooking like it's in an oven. That's two zone cooking, uno, dos. And indirect is when you take this from here and you go to there. It's been about 30 seconds and you can see we're starting to get some nice color already. So let's give it a couple minutes. As an interim stop before it goes on to the fat side, we're gonna let just the fatty meat cook just to get little color on it. Now, let's see how we've done. That's pretty. Let's go fat side for a little bit. Now, it's gonna probably drip and flame, so I don't need to do too much. I do though wanna give it a little char before I move it over to the indirect side. Flame, I knew that was gonna happen. It's okay, pick it up, move it. You know, the fat side wants to drip and flare, but that's really nice. And I'm also going to do these two ends because they need some love and happiness. Who sings that song? Love and happiness? Okay. Love and happiness. I've never heard of it. How does it go? I, I can't. No, I Are can't. You? I can't and I won't. Are you thinking of Pursuit of Happiness? Nope. Might be Al Green. Hey Siri, who sings Love and Happiness? Al Green. Thank you. Okay, I'm feeling good about this. I like this little fat charring. I like what we've done on the meat side. So I'm gonna take the whole kid now, move him like that, put my lid on, and wait. I'm looking for 140 degrees. Lamb, you cook to 145, but it's gonna to continue to rise a little bit. So I'll yank it at 140, at 140, 141, let it rise up there, sit 10 minutes, loosely covered with some foil, and then we cut him. And then we eat him. And we're there. Oh, hi, buddy, look at you. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, let's get them off. We cover them with a little foil. Give them about uh, five, ten minutes, and then we eat. And here we are. Anticlimactic, but here we are. Oh, geez, geez. So a little bit of the crust came off when I was manhandling it with my tongs. But all in all, I think we've done a brilliant job here, boys. I can't believe how juicy it looks. It's amazing, isn't it? And by the way, it was mostly a dry rub that went on. It's not like it was wet. Not like it was wet. Well, let's see how we've done, shall we? That's what you get. 140 degrees, pulled it. Now we're slightly close. We're closer to 145. And beautiful little chops. Oh, be still my frickin' heart. Look at this. This is a thin kid. Everybody else. You know, it's funny what you end up with. This guy, this big thick guy here is like a double, and this kid here is thin. But that's okay. Look how pretty that is. Well, if I gotta choose one, I'll take the kid closest to me. Still steaming. Oh, man. Look how perfect that is. Ah, oh, let's go. The other red meat. And the perfect bite for me will be a combination of this beautiful center meaty part, but some of this crusty, flavorful, a little fatty outside and it goes like this mm. i mean a fork and knife would definitely be an option but i feel like king henry the eighth or my friend steve in a restaurant in new york one night more lamb more lamb he claims not to have said that he said it holy yes it's so good get your head around lamb look lamb the other red meat get your head around it people think it's gamey I think it's flavorful. And this little crust on here is the bomb. All right, thanks for hanging out. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a like if you like us. Let us know in the comments what you want to see us make. And there's a very good chance we'll make it for you. And don't forget, we're giving away a knife every video this year. I still can't believe it. Oh, and guess who's today winner is? I will present today's winner on a slice of perfectly cooked lamb right there. <gasps> Congratulations.